Hello, happy Tuesday, everybody. I am Patty. I'm Carrie. And today we are going to do DIY with stencils today, specifically how to do wood burning with a marker or with a traditional um, wood burner using stencils. It's going to be really interesting. There's a lot of easy little pro tips for us to share with you, and I think that you're going to really learn a lot. Yeah, I think so too. And this is a we go live every Tuesday and we cover all things DIY, crafting, painting, stenciling. Yeah. And today we're adding in woodworking. So if you have woodworking friends, mm -hmm. go ahead and share them, tag them in this so that, you know, we can kind of help out the, the, the whole crafting yeah. Yeah. DIY community because we have little snippets here and there that's really going to be beneficial for a lot of people. Yeah. And, you know, when we think about stencils, you know, you might think about like painting a sign or doing something like that, but you can do background techniques, you can do cards, you can do uh, wrapping paper, wood burning, you can do fabric painting, you can paint on your cookies. Mm -hmm. Our stencils are actually food safe. Mm -hmm. You can make um, pretty patterns in your barista coffee. Yeah. Um, there's like just about nothing you can't do with really? a stencil. I agree. It's, it's amazing. I agree. So, um, yeah, and let's show it. you some stuff that we have done. We are live on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern on Facebook or YouTube. And then we also release tutorials on YouTube on Saturdays. So last week we released our Happy Halloween. So pretty. And this has a glitter frame. I showed you how to do two different types of glitter. Um, just can you, so you can, can you catch the glitter? Just the glitter so that you can get it's hard. To, I'm trying to like move it and watch in here too. Um, it's we gave you some different options so you could see how two different glitters looked on this background. And then I also showed you two different ways to glitter with a, um, a repositionable adhesive and then with paint. So we have that. And then this week you guys are getting a special treat because we have an extra release on Wednesday. We have a quick video showing you how to do a DIY Halloween trick or treat bag. And you know how much fun would this mm -hmm. be? These bags are so cheap. How much fun would it be to have your kids sit down at a table with like two or three or four different Halloween stencils and make their own wombo combo yep. and have their own bag? What a great project. Yes. Agreed. Absolutely amazing. And so this will come out Wednesday evening. And then Saturday, Love you it. guys are getting a full full carry <laughs> Hello. Hello. hope you like me um saturday we are going to release this new pumpkin tutorial i love this project so much yeah this is super fun we are on a pumpkin shaped surface we are doing buffalo plaid we are doing banding we are doing uh, the centerpiece which kind of allows you to do a reverse stencil mm -hmm. and then we're foiling we're adding ribbon yeah, you guys, um, this is evidence that you can do buffalo plaid in any color. Yes. Like, it's amazing how versatile any of the plaid stencils. We, I think we have something like 20 different mm -hmm. styles of plaid yeah. stencils. Yeah, and I'm going to actually give this to you so you can put it more over toward Dustin because it is not showing up very great. Look at that foil in the middle. Isn't that amazing? Yes. I feel very cute right this second. <laughs> We are having a, um, a little nasty man on our uh, YouTube, so oh. I'm going to take over on here okay. and get him off of there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys, um, every now and again, you get uh, glitchy people and glitches for um, your system as well, so we have to take care of some of that stuff every now and again. Okay, so that is that project. And then let's talk about wood burning. Okay, so wood burning is a classic... Um, just natural way. We're in a bohemian kind of era right now. And so it is just such a good combination for nature, minimalist, um, recycling, all of that kind of stuff. So there's so many ways you can find all kinds of things at your Goodwills and your thrift stores, at garage sales, um, baby's high chairs, um, bins, totes. You can go to Ikea, find new things that use those things. Um, so you can use wood burning on a million things. So I want to talk about what to do right, what to do wrong, and how to how to do all the things. So make sure you ask questions because we're going to be answering questions. That's one of the reasons we go live is that we can answer the questions as you have them. Okay, so I want to talk about um, wood prep first. And this is the marker that we're going to explore today. This is the Scor Scorch Marker Pro. 
Um, the Scorch Company is coming out with a fine liner um, in the future. I think they're just getting the packaging and everything done now. So they are working on that right now. And then, so you can do this with a chemical and a heat gun. And this will not work with embossing. You have to actually have a heat gun. I want to say this is not super expensive, maybe $35, $40, something like that. And it's a little monster, but it stays super sturdy and um, steady. Okay, and then you can also use like your little heat tool. And this is the Walnut Hollow heat tool. And um, this does a really good job. But there with both of these things, the wood prep and the surface prep is going to be your nemesis or it's going to be your best friend. So I think we should start right there and I will show you some stuff. Okay, so the number one thing that you want to do is you want to choose either choose your wood. I had some... Um, some, whoops, some surfaces that we were just testing applications of screws and things like that on. So this is just kind of scrap. But if you were at a garage sale or something like that and you found a tote, these look really great with mason jars sitting in them. They look really good with candles. Um, you can put your um, condiments on your table. You can, you can do things on the back of the commode and um, do a cute little cheeky see what I did there? Um, little saying on there and um, put your other bathroom essentials and stuff like that in there. So when you find things like this, you want to kind of reuse them. So I'm going to show you, I've got this one already prepped. So I want to show you this here and ignore the fact that I'm kind of just a cruddy lumber kind of moment. All right. So what the very first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you are sanded smooth. I was doing some playing around and even though I had, this is almost pretty smooth. If we, if we listen, you really can't hear any of the rough. We do that kind of test frequently. Um, you can't hear the rough, but I can feel the ridges of the grain of the wood. Okay. So what you want to do is take a rougher grit. This is a 60 grit and you want to dig in and sand. You want to do this for this, um, burning tool and for the scorch marker. What I found when I was playing with both of them, I try when I do a new product review kind of thing, um, I try to do it like the most basic kind of person that has no experience with it would try. And that means I don't know about sanding blocks, I don't know about sanding discs, I don't know about any of it. And so I try it there and then I sneak up on it, and then I sneak up on it, and then I sneak up on it. So um, that's how I go about it. I start adding more skills and stuff. If your surface isn't smooth, then you are going to be sorry in both ways. I found sorry places both ways. So you have to get it smooth. So 60 grit. And then you let your fingers kind of do the walking if you have any more ridges. When I was looking at some of the people that had some videos online, a lot of them were using random orbital sanders or the round disc, um, auto disc things. And what I don't like about that is if you're going to be staining your wood, um, some of that hazing, if you don't take it to a really fine finished place, some of that hazing can really um, show once you stain your wood and, and that kind of thing. So I like to go with the grain. I like to keep everything nice and straight. And then I like to graduate down into the grits of my sandpaper. Never cross your grain unless that's what you're going for. Okay, then we're gonna go into a 220 grit. And this is starting to get nice feeling. You get it done? Yes, okay. for now. We've had a, a couple today. Yeah. Um, I had. I do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, well, first of all, for those of you watching today, it is October 18th, 2022. We have a really cool um, sale for you today that if you purchase a $50 gift card, you can get a $25 gift card for free. Ooh. And we do e-gift cards, so you'll get an email <clears throat> with a code. So if you had some stencil stuff that you wanted for Christmas, maybe you want to help your spouse out with your Christmas, um, yeah. take care of your own Christmas. Um, and I posted it on our Facebook page. So it has the instructions on how you add them and what you need to do. And there are no limits, no yeah. coupon codes. So you can buy as many $50 gift cards as you want and get $25 one free. 
That is so one's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so you can give one away mm -hmm. as a... Yeah, keep the more expensive one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. We did have Kelly asked, can you clarify for me wood versus MDF? Does wood go outside and MDF inside? What is the rule? So I have a um, welcome to my fire pit sign that my husband painted at, um, well, five years ago because it was when our boardroom um, 46 here in Gallup Police, um, which is a kind of a corking canvas, but we use stencils and boards, we paint on MDF. Um, we painted that five years ago when we opened and it is out where I didn't have a gutter on my porch for the longest time, so the water would just kind of come down on top of it. And I think it has a coat of wax on the front and the back, and that's it. And it is fine. It has not self, it hasn't disintegrated yet. Um, yeah, it's got spider webs attached to it right now, but um, it's Halloween. It's, it's I think uh, Halloween. It, I put those there. Uh, but yeah, they. Um, so you can use MDF outside. You do want to just go ahead and seal it. So you either put some wax on it. If it's going to be in the sunshine, I feel like polyurethane is a better idea. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, both can go outside. Um, both are fine. Okay. Okay. And now the next last step is I'm going to take a 2,000 grit. This is in your wet or dry sanding packages. Um, and I always cup my sandpaper. If I'm not putting it in a sanding block, I always try to roll it up on the edges and that helps prevent scraping because those little sharp corners will scratch into your wood and that will make it um, extremely, um, well, it, you'll scuff it up. So then listen to how soft this is. Oh, that's smooth. Wow. Wish we had feel a vision because you would be like, oh my goodness. Oh my All right, and we're gonna go one last step. If you ever have wood burned, how many of you have wood burned? I'd love to hear your comments about that. Um, it is so easy for the wood burning tool um, to get caught in the grain of the wood. Um, it is a really, really easy thing to do. And so we have to get rid of those grains. And the advanced pro tip here is you take, this is a box cutter knife, okay? And this is a brand new one, so it's nice and sharp. And then you're going to take it at an angle and you're just going to draw it down along the grain of your wood and you will actually get some sawdust on there even though I've done all these other sanding steps. And that is like mm -hmm. glass. I can't handle that sound. Oh, <laughs> it's a little uh, nails on the chalkboard kind of sounding. So just so you know, ah! just so you know. Oh, that is so... Okay, here, you got to try. Oh, yeah, that's super... Isn't that cool? Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's the softest. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it just... It almost feels like baby skin almost, mm -hmm. you know? It's just like super, 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 like perfectly smooth. Okay, so that is how you're not going to get bleeding under. Um, you can use um, vinyl to, cut, to put your, stencil, to put your um, scorch paste on. Um, you can also use vinyl to do like your pattern, but I'm going to show you um, a trick. Stencils are more durable. Stencils are steadier. Mm -hmm. But any of the things that you can use um, will cause problems if you don't have a perfectly level surface. So you want to make sure that you have that level surface. We have a good mix of people. A lot of people said that they have tried wood burning. Mm -hmm. um, some, someone had said that when their kids were younger, they used to do it. Someone actually said that they have the scorch marker and they yeah. haven't used it yet. So uh, they're glad to yeah. see that we're, we're using it now. Yeah. Um, and one thing, um, if you were going to be staining your surface, um, you could stain your surface first and then you could do the steps that I showed you here. Mm -hmm. And then if, if it was very rough, you could apply another coat of stain, do the steps one more time, and then you should be in a good like locked in kind of environment. But I did notice on both of these, when I didn't take these steps, the stencil was riding the top of the ridges mm -hmm. and the, mark, the heat tool was getting interrupted. It was causing it to drag into the raised bits. So you definitely have to do this part if you want it to be pro. And that doesn't matter if you're using like raw log cuts or any of that, you want it to be smooth or you're not gonna be happy. Okay, so I'm gonna take that away. 
And then I'm gonna do the back of this stencil. What I love about this, so like this is a tote, right? This tote could go on your table and you could put bake on there and you could have your, mm -hmm. your flour, you could have your salt and pepper, you could have your seasonings and stuff like that. Each of these words on here is a stencil. Yes. Even though it's all on one stencil. So when you get our word stencils, you have one, two, three, four, five, like, okay, 20, mm -hmm. 20 different stencils all in one, or you can make it be a background, mm -hmm. you can tile it, you can do all the things. Okay, so I'm going to get out some wax paper. Wax paper is a really easy way to make a mess and not have to clean it up. We are going to put the stick and restick. Um, this is on our website, studior12.com. And if you guys are liking these tips, make sure that you um, like and share and subscribe and do all the things on all the channels um, so that you get notified when we have more videos. Okay, so I'm gonna take the stick and restick and put some on my palette. This makes your stencil into a giant post-it note. I don't know if any of you have used vinyl for stencils, but when you use a vinyl stencil, the minute that you peel it off of your project and you're like, ugh, that wasn't straight or that wasn't perfect or I wanna put it back on and make a fix mm -hmm. or anything like that, you have to cut a whole nother one, you have to weed it all out and it's thin. Yeah. So it's not the most optimal. So these stencils are reusable. You can put the adhesive on it, make it into something that feels like vinyl. Yeah. And then it sticks down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's, it's really great for <clears throat> line stencils it's great for oh adding glitter it's great for adding foil. tender stencils it's, yeah there's this is yeah. invaluable tool. yeah this is this makes they used to only have this in a spray and the spray is like really awkward number one it's propellant mm -hmm. and um it's really awkward to dry and spray and have it well ventilated and blah 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 so um we're going to take an ink sweeper we're going to go into the stick and restick I'm just going to do the eat word down here. Tap straight up and down. Offload a little bit off to the side. I feel like we are a, what is it, a nose to tail stencil company because this sheet of mylar that I'm using is a piece of mylar that you can buy from us yep. that is just our end scrap from cutting and doing all the things. and. Um, it makes a reusable palette paper. So now you can have a palette paper that you can just recycle over and over and over again. Yeah, and if you're not on our newsletter, you're going to want to get on that soon yeah. because we have something fun coming up with palette paper this week with our reusable palette paper, Love good it. timing. That goes in the water and I'm gonna peel this straight up so I don't make a mess on the front and we're gonna set that aside to dry. Now okay. something that you guys might not have caught it just now, when Patty put her ink sweeper into the water bucket, when you put that in, if you put it with the sponge side down and just let it float, it's gonna pop on its it, side. It flips right back over. And so then it will potentially start drying out. So what we like to do is take the butt end of the brush. So we, if you know, ever notice that we, we got have that brushes scene. upside yep. down, in our bucket, it's because they are holding down some of our daubers yeah. and ink sweepers. Yeah, so this one's popped back up, but I can see that he's nice and saturated and, and wet and everything. So yeah, that is a really good trip. Um, trip. Can we do some cleaning out of the boxes, please? We have some people saying they can't see what's going on. Okay. Uh, yes, is that, that better? Yes, yes that was excellent. the one that was in the way. I am going to put a piece of tape on this palette paper just to keep it still. Okay, so now we've covered how you prep the box or how you prep your surface and how you prep your stencil. The neat thing about the stencil is you can take your surface and here, I've got them handily taped right down here and couldn't find them. Okay, so I've got this one um, stick and re-sticked on the back so it makes it into a giant re-stickable post-it note. You can remove the post-it note texture off the back by using rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a drag. It doesn't really cause a problem to leave it sticky, but if you need it gone, that is how. Okay, so I thought this was um, Life is Better in the Woods. It was a nice little kind of wood burning kind of feeling project. Um, I 
I'm gonna show you what you would do if you were using a burning tool. A lot of us have these, um, actually case in point. I have three of them um, and I have all these neat nibs. You've got, you can brand leather and I've got all these little blades and all these things down here and little stands for everything. But I keep my tools kind of collected together in a bin so that I can find all the bits and pieces. Okay, so we have these things laying around. Let's learn how to use them. So what you would do if you were gonna use the wood burner, you're gonna take the Ghost Rider. Okay, and you are going to get the gray lead. Um, I could use the white lead, but it may be difficult to see. And you're going to just go ahead and you're going to trace inside the letters. So rather than, tr so what you would do if you didn't have a stencil and you didn't have vinyl, is you would take a printout of your pattern, you would take graphite paper, you would lay the one down, get it straight, put the graphite paper on there, and you would trace over the top of that. That is how you would get that pattern on there. When you have a stencil already, you have basically a little template that you can just trace on and get the line drawing on there. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna just trace on the outside, all the edges. <clears throat> Okay, and that is how that would look if you were going to do that. If you were going to go ahead and do your, you would plug this in, you would get it hot. Um, the best advice that I have for you if you are going to be using one of these is number one, be careful, this gets very hot. But number two is you wanna go low heat if you have control over that and you wanna go slow. Okay, the more slow you go and you wanna do it without the stencil laying on there. I don't wanna lift it up because I don't wanna line it back up again. But um, you want to go low and slow, and you would just trace the outside lines. Um, I had the pointy tip on here, the actual one that you would want to use is one that has that little bit of an angle right here, and then you would use it on that angle. Okay, you wouldn't use it on the toe, you would use it on the angle. And then what you do is you outline the letter before you do anything else. And then you can fill it in. And usually when you're doing the wood burning tool, you're gonna fill it in using any of these other nibs with a little bit of texture and pattern, which are really cool. Okay, so that covers how you would prep it for wood burning. Now we get into the scorch, because I feel like this is something everybody knows about and then this is something that's brand new. Okay, so what we do with this is we use the stencil as a stencil. And then this has two ends to it, and you have to do that shaky thing where you go sideways and get it all shook up and stuff. And then you can take your tip, and it's got a writing tip, so you could just go on here and start writing. The way that they show it in the online literature is they just start going dab, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, dab, dab, dab into the stencil. I find that that is very sloppy and very, very, um, you're gonna get some bleed under with that. There are ways to fix it. I'm gonna show you that I've got some mistake ones over here that I've done. And then I just kind of bleed off some of that by pressing that over here on my palette. And then on the other end, we have a twist off one. Sorry, wrong hand. I can't unwind with my left hand. And that has a little foam applicator that you could dab, dab, dab. But once again, it kind of comes off a little bit sloppy. That's what I'm excited about the um, fine tip applicator. I think that's gonna be amazing. If I was just using like a fine tip applicator with this, I would try my best to get all the way around the edges and kind of fill in with the fatter one if I was doing that. Okay, go ahead. All right, Terry asked if this will hurt the stencils, either the... It does not, it does not at okay. all. Yeah. And then, and then with the burning, mm -hmm. um, the... someone asked if they can use a pencil if they have you can use the pencil you can use a pencil. yeah what you want to do when you're doing your burning um if you're using the tracing piece of it um is you want to make sure that you are burning your line because you don't want to have to clean up right. the pencil line so you burn on that line or burn 
slightly over that line right. so, so make sure that you're keeping that clean the marker itself is not going to hurt the stencil no. you won't want to use the plug-in tool with your no, stencil. do not on. use the heat tool with yes. the stencil in place I it just will didn't melt the yeah, it will melt yes. the stencil yeah you can actually use a tip like that in some mylar we actually sell three mil mylar really 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 thin mylar um, but you can cut your own stencil so you could lay your art mm -hmm. under there and then you could you know, make your own stencil using one of those tools as cool. well. So it's a neat um, little Our friend thing. Valerie said that she got her gift cards and mm. is going to tell her husband that he bought her birthday gift. That's exactly <laughs> what we were thinking. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, my husband is the worst at picking up any gift. <laughs> I'm super bad about buying myself what I want to, so. Yeah, mm. all the time. Yeah. Like year round. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not shy about that, so. Okay, so I've got this little applicator. Um, we are uncertain whether these are keepers or not, but I was testing and playing with a couple of other applicators. So far, so good, but I haven't taken them all the way through, so I'm not gonna share this just yet, but it is just a little well-supported, very much like the poly brush. Mm -hmm. um, it's well-supported inside and has very little pushy stuff in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna show the life part of this. Um, and then we're going to do the burning part, the scorching part. Okay, so we're gonna take our applicator and we're gonna dab it into this medium. I would not use one of our dome brushes. Um, the, I, the ink sweeper and the um, jumbo dauber left, um, it got underneath the stencil. I did not put the stick and restick at that moment. And then I really did like the ink sweeper with it. Um, and I really did like this. So these are the things that I found to be good so far. And so what you'll do is just use your finger as support. And you'll just apply the medium. <clears throat> While you are applying, mm -hmm. we had a couple people asking about brushes being out of stock. They're in stock right um, now. A lot of our, I actually just went through after we got that comment and looked at our brushes. Now there are, there are some in some different sizes that we have not been able to get in. Yes, if some, we do not, not have them, it is a supply issue that unfortunately at this point, we're just not able to get right now. But I think looking through here that we probably have the best stock of brushes that we have had right. in the last two years. Yeah. Like it's, there are some that are sold out. However, we have a lot of brushes and, and if, a lot of brushes. If you guys think about what we do um, for our videos and stuff and we're on YouTube and we're, you know, it's a worldwide market. There goes mm -hmm. some glasses, this is my tell. <laughs> Chatty Patty's coming out. <laughs> Watch it. Um, but no, if you um, if you pay attention, um, like to how many people view the videos mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff, like we're legit showing you the real way that we use stencils. We really use these tools. We really have success with this, and it, it just like it shows, and people are like, "Yeah, I need that." And so, you know, it it's part for the course that in a worldwide market, you're not going to be able to know what demand you're exactly. going to have. Exactly. Yes. It's really actually very interesting. Um, We're going to use that word. Is there a way, Nick, that I could have you pop up the overhead camera and see if you can see, we had a commenter asking, Jarita said, can you see where you've applied the marker medium? You kind of can't. Um, let me show you, lift it up. So you can see it, and I'll tell you what, that is some messy looking yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's bleedy. Yeah, it's super bleedy even without that. But what I like about this is there is, there is a fix for that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that off and we're gonna heat this. And this will be, this is a pretty quiet heat tool. Um, you cannot use your embossing weapon. Whoop, I almost made that a weapon of my own. I, but I will that. say that with being able to <clears throat> see it, I could start to see it from here. That okay. it, it does start to darken a mm -hmm. little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see it in the overhead. So I'm going to turn this on, and hopefully this does take a minute or two. Um, my husband lost patience earlier. <laughs> oh. I made the mistake. Okay. We fixed that. We'll turn it back on. Um, with this heat gun... Um, if you push it off, it automatically goes into a cooling cycle so you don't hurt yourself and it will go through a timed cycle. I didn't realize it did that, so I pushed it thinking it was like the power 
and then it went through oh i had frustration today okay so then we hit the plus and we get it hot and then you just kind of hold it low and slow over the top of it <clears throat> if you have knots it will make those knots blister and boil so just fyi and then my husband made me a lovely trash can base which i'm going to take this off because it is way too hot oh i can't do that i have to put it here you guys have to see it okay so we'll just be too high and it'll be fine um sharita asked would a ranger heat tool heat it tool be enough i don't know the answer to that okay. yeah it, it's got to be a heat gun so if they're calling it an embossing tool i don't think so um oh look at it, it's starting to turn and then I did find that when I, um, when I, if you guys, you guys need to hang around to see how I fix this, okay? Because that's, that's kind of messy. It's goopy. Goopy. Yeah. You're going to love the fix though. You would not think that. Oh, hi. I did find that um, after you get going and you start seeing some color, it, it like instantly goes. Yes. Yeah. You can actually, this is not eating through the surface of the wood, so you can actually take this and you can sand it all off and go again. Okay, so I'm going to say that that's dark enough. You think that's dark enough? I think that's dark enough. It's, you can see it on the, on the overhead. Okay. Um, wow. even look at, we're getting some grain getting... melting. Okay, Yay. so I'm going to turn this on cool. So that's going to keep doing its cooling cycle louder. Sorry. Um... You want to take it away? I'll unplug it. Be careful. Thanks, Steve. Put it where nobody can touch it. Okay, thinking like a mom. Okay, so what I want to show you, um, and actually I'm going to show you on this guy because this guy is hot. <clears throat> on here, this is the one that I did on the smooth surface, and this is the one that I did with the rougher surface, and this is really gnarly looking. And what you do is you take these little bits of sandpaper, bits of sandpaper, and um, we keep these for exactly this reason. These are the little holes that are poked inside mm -hmm. of the um, the the sanding block. Yeah, Thank when you, you when block. you take your sanding block off. So when you take this paper <laughs> off, there's little a little piece that's on each side of the underneath. And they're brand new. It's got like teeth in mm -hmm. it. And yeah. so we always save those mm -hmm. for days like this yeah. when we want a teeny tiny piece. So this has just got this little end piece and it's perfect for this. So what you do if you want to sand or erase any errors, what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of go right next with the little folded edge. And you're just going to go and clean up anything that you have. And then if you hate what you're doing, then you can just go in and erase it away. So that is one of the things that I love about the scorches. If you had a cutting board or you had something like that that you really wanted to be a good, good, good representation mm -hmm. and you had some error and you wouldn't have to erase the whole thing if you've used a stencil because you could lay it right back on top, reapply your medium right there and you could go again. So that is a really neat thing. So you can actually go ahead, and this is still hot. It's not hot, hot, hot. This guy is sloppy. Our friend Vicki said that she uses a product called Torch Paste. Oh, cool. And it's an actual paste. It works great with stencils and does not bleed under. I am gonna try that. I'm gonna make a note right now. So yeah, but so see how easy it is to go in there and get that cleaned up so there's a lot to clean up i'm actually a little bit like surprised because when i did this guy right here i used the little applicator and i didn't have the bleeding under and i did do the sanding so i'm kind of like mm -mm -mm about that so i'm not sure what the difference is but it is easy to clean up and i'm glad to show that that comes off way easier than that yeah agreed kind of mind yeah and it just i mean it literally just cleans up like kind of like a little snap there i wish that um cleaning up your stencils was that easy <laughs> if you had messes 
if you're using the dome brushes, you won't have messes, right? Okay. Now let's talk about how to seal your surface when you get done. Okay. So now you've got it cleaned up. You've done all the work, done everything. Um, the one thing you don't want to do, I feel, um, I've seen people just be like, brush on some stuff. If you've got burn char because you've used your burning tool or you have this and there's like you've sanded and done some things, the last thing I would ever want to do is brush through my project. I would always spray. So you can spray on, this is Krylon 1311. Um, it's a matte spray, so you can spray it over stain. You can spray it over raw wood. You can spray it over paint. Spray that, let it dry, and now you can brush on any kind of finish. Now you can wax because now that, that burn is locked under. So if you've got a lot of char and a lot of burn, give it a couple of coats and then go to your other finishes. Okay. Okay. Um... I think that that cup... Oh, were you going to show if they don't have any heating tools and a quick way to do that with... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about this earlier. Forgot completely about it. So we did have someone comment and say, oh, this kind of looks like an advanced, an advanced technique. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. So one of the things that we were talking about is when you use some paint that's char color... I'm mixing a uh, brown number 17 with number 28. Sandpaper and spray paint. Say it one more time. Sandpaper and spray paint. Try them on. You're right. And oh. the sandpaper bucket. Sorry, I was like, where is sandpaper? Um, okay, so if you take some black in your brown, mix them together into a nice charry color. What I like about wasn't planning on painting today, can you tell? Clean up the palette knife. Always clean up your palette knife right when you use it and then you will not be sad. Um, but you can take your black color, put that sticky and your dome brush, and you can paint your char. So there is that. So if you love wood burning tools and you love to put, you know, that, the, you can't duplicate the texture that you can right. get with the wood burning. You or can't duplicate some of the, or the yeah. smell. <laughs> Everybody was like, hey, are we having a fire in here today? So you do a couple of little swirly coats through your stencil, which is reusable. So you could do your burning, you could do your scorching you could do your painting and it's all in the same stencil it washes off it's mm -hmm. all perfect i'm going to do a second coat and i love the swirling with the dome brush because it dries so fast okay and then we remove and and it looks just like <laughs> <laughs> super clean and no ridges doesn't care about the grain of the wood and ta-da so I'm not advocating don't wood burn. I'm advocating that you can imitate the look of that mm -hmm. and uh, you can't imitate it if you're gonna get fancy with it. Um, I've seen some beautiful, what is it, pyrography, I think is mm -hmm. what it's called, um, wood burning and amazing details and stuff, which you could do with a brush, yeah. um, but that's kind of not who we are. We can't show you all of that, but I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of comparison mm -hmm. of the three techniques today and that you have I want to see if you try it. Yes. Let us know if you try it. Love it. Send us some pictures. You can go to our Facebook page, Studio R12 Stencils, and there is a tab across the top. There's a whole bunch of tabs. One says home, one says videos, and one says posts. If you go to the posts tab, then you can upload a photo there. Show us your finished work. Is that in the communities one underneath there? No. Yeah. And no. then <laughs> this. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> quit making, making it more confusing. <laughs> so we're going to go to the posts tab and you're going to upload your photos and then they will show up under the community tab. So you post from the post tab and then you can view them from the community tab. We do have a little giveaway going on right now Ooh, yeah. that um, from now until October 31st on Halloween, we want to see your Halloween projects. There is a pin post on our Facebook and you can leave a comment with your photos and we're going to select a random winner to get a $50 gift card. Ooh, yay. You guys, thank you so much. And we will see you on Tuesday next week at noon. Yep.